So a while back, I had discussed doing a review or a comparison between three bipods. So on the left, we have the UUQ, kind of an Amazon special bipod. In the middle here is a UTG overbore bipod. It's kind of unique in its own way. And I do have reviews out of both of those bipods already. So you can go and see the use of those and a couple of my thoughts. But I'm going to compare all these together against the Atlas. So the Atlas is really my go-to bipod. It is the most expensive bipod. And uh, looking at prices, you're going from about $70 to the UTG, which is about $150, $160, to the Atlas, which is $300, $330, somewhere in that range. Here's some of the attachment methods that you can check out. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Each of these has its own method. There's some similarities and definitely some differences. And that plays into why I like the particular one of these better than the others. So the UUQ here, you can see there's a brass plate and the attachment. Uh, it's quick detach, but getting it attached takes a little uh, finagling. Definitely takes a little finagling. And that brass plate, you know, you're relying on that. But I'll be honest with you, once it's attached and you get it set up right, it's really quite sturdy, and I, I'm not too worried about it. I put it on a heavy rifle, so I'm not terribly worried about that. The UTG has a mounting block, so you're going to need to use like a Torx bit, and this block right here sits on your Picatinny, and then you're going to go ahead and tighten that down. So you're looking at a little bit of time to get the actual block mounted in. It kind of makes it convenient because you can attach and detach the bipod itself quickly from the rifle, but not the mount. And you can't use the bipod without the mounting block there. And so there's some technicalities. You can see that not everything is perfect with this either. You would like it to be really fast attach and detach, but technically it's only fast detach and attach for the actual bipod piece. But that's really cool and it has some other unique features. So I tighten it down there. You can see that's what it looks like after mounting on there. And then there's the Atlas, which is, look how fast this is. Really fast on, just as fast off. Very convenient, and that's why I love that one. All of these bipods have legs that have multiple positions. They can lock out in different positions, just like you're seeing here on the UUQ Amazon Special Bipod. For a $70 bipod, that's pretty cool. And actually, the UUQ has the most uh, positions if you can see right there, you can kind of get a look at where they're locking into, very solid. The UTG also has a few positions to lock into. All the usable ones are all the, the functional ones, not quite as many options, but still, you know, pretty sturdy. Um, even with the legs for it, it's pretty sturdy seeming. It's going to change the harmonics of your barrel a little bit, and I'll talk about that later, especially if you're using uh, particular kinds of rifles. But it's nice to be able to have that, depending on the shooting platform you have and then go back up. It's a very sturdy bipod, guys, like the beefy internals. It's a pretty heavy bipod. I think it might be the heaviest of the three. Now, if you're going to try to adjust for pan or tilt on the UUQ, you know, it's really a bench bipod. It's not meant for PRS or probably even um, like any situation where you need to be really fast. It's probably not meant for that. Although, uh, adjusting for um, angle, if you're going to use your bubble level, you don't have to use the feature I just grabbed there. You could just adjust the legs. They have very many increments to adjust the legs, and you could get pretty close to leveling, leveling your rifle out just using the leg adjustment feature. But if you're going to use the mechanism there, it takes some time. Uh, the UTG, now it has a tightening mechanism on the block, and you can see I've got it mounted underneath the rifle. It's not overbore right here. I loosened it up, and I'll loosen it up all the way here. And look how much range of adjustment. You have pan and tilt in there, guys. And so hunters would probably really appreciate that. When it's loose, it's very loose. And when it's tight, it's, it's fairly tight. Now, looking at the Atlas here, sorry it's not attached to a rifle. But I just want to tighten it up and show you how, how tight that can get. And loosen it up. And when it's loose, it moves quite freely. I'll try to hold on to it here and give you a better look. It moves quite freely for... Uh, you know, tilt, not pan. There's no pan. I don't really care about that. I'm not much of a hunter. So just tilt is all I care about, fixing the angle. It's my primary feature I'm looking for. So here's your UTG for the height, the Atlas, and the UUQ. So the UTG is the tallest, followed by the UUQ, followed by the Atlas. The Atlas is actually the shortest of all three in that position right there, which is just kind of the standard configuration you're going to use if you're shooting on the bench or in the dirt. Um, most of the time, when I shoot off the prone 
with the Atlas, I do end up needing just a little bit more height because that's a little low, but shooting from the bench, I feel like the other bipods are just slightly high, which is easily compensated for. But if you're a prone shooter, I'm going to say the Atlas is actually just a, a tad low for most, most guys. Here's extended. You can see how incredibly wide the stance is on that UTG. The UUQ also has a very wide stance. It's very impressive. I mean, we're looking at bipods that are all, um, you know, fairly affordable. Uh, the Atlas, I, I know, is much more money than most people spend. Uh, it's more expensive than some people's NRL 22 rifle if they're shooting in base class. But it's a really good bipod, and it actually has the least uh, wide stance of these three bipods. It is the least. Get an idea of the height there. It's nice and high if you need to shoot over weeds, trying to get an elevated position that you're building up. But very sturdy. Each of these is very sturdy in the extended position. That's one thing I was concerned about is once you start extending it, you get more play in bipods more often than not. But with these, all of these are pretty sturdy. I think the most play is in the UTG, but it's more just in flex rather than play. It's not loose parts, it's just flex, which is to be expected with uh, the type of attachment mechanism that it has on top. So you can see here, this is how you adjust for leg length. This one is uh, it's relatively fast and smooth. Back in, just kind of takes a little bit of a back and forth motion there to make it click. The Atlas, uh, that, there's a little bit of a learning curve on that, but it's smooth enough. And then you have your UTG overbore, and this one actually springs back into place. It's very easy to use. It's probably the fastest to use out of all of them as far extend, as uh, extending the legs using that feature. Here's some groups at 100 yards using my 457 uh, 22 LR. You can see the five shot group there with Amazon Special. It's about an inch. The UTG, um, that one on the far left, I don't know. Maybe it's a flyer, maybe not, but it opened up a little bit more. I think that's probably an inch and a quarter at the most. And then you can see with the Atlas, and uh, this was not with a clean barrel, this was with a barrel that had at least 100 rounds through it, so we're not really seeing inconsistencies here, guys. I'm not shooting, you know, cold bore and, and clean bore to dirty bore. It's not seasoning the barrel. The barrel's already seasoned. And you can just see that with the B&T Industries Atlas, it just shot better for me. And this was all with the legs extended forward in an angled position. And so I'm going to show you a test here in a second where the legs are not extended forward. I did see more play in the group sizes with the legs extended forward than usual. I like shooting just vertical. If the legs are just vertical on the table or the bench or the prone, I seem to get better groups in general. But that particular test right there showed you kind of how you might expect your groups to open up a little bit if you're shooting with those legs forked out at like a 45 or some degree forward rather than just vertical dispersion. I, I usually get bigger groups if I mess with those legs at any particular angle rather than just up and down. And that, it was all of them, but the least affected was the Atlas. Now I use tilt pretty often in my shooting style, and so I'm going to compare these two at 625 yards. All right guys, using the UTG overbore at 625 yards and actually just some Hornady Black 140 grain uh, hollow point boat tail bullets, not like, not the best, okay, 140 grain and that horny black stuff, it's very, it's okay, you know, but this rifle has still been shooting about half MOA to sometimes less, sometimes quarter MOA, and uh, so this right here, I got four, four shots in three inches, so we're looking at a little under, a little under half MOA for those four, I did have a flyer, and it's a pretty obvious flyer, bad trigger pull, still pressing the trigger wrong, it still happens to me, but Anyways, there's a, you know, a little under half MOA. The UTG overboard does pretty good. Um, really extends out there sitting on that night vision hood or the Mirage shield that MDT sells for the ACC chassis. So it sits pretty far out there. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my Atlas and I'm going to do five shots again. And we'll just see if I can post up a better group or not. And if, uh, if I can't, I really do feel confident at this point in my shooting to just say the UTG overboard might be superior for that particular rig and the way that it handles the vibration and the jump and all that kind of stuff uh, but so far nothing i complain about that's certainly keeping in line with what i've expected from the rifle thus far so go back to the line 625 yards or so and we'll try the atlas all right so i went back to 625 and took five more shots from the atlas bipod and i, I actually did dial a slight correction for data i did two tenths of a mil i really should have just done one tenth and left it 
but uh, no shots in between. I just made that correction and so it, it brought it up a little too high. That was my part. Anyways, pretty much if I had left it at uh, one tenth correction, would have been all five shots in the 10 ring. And uh, there is one that's a little steep. I'm not sure what to say about that guy up there. He's definitely an outlier into the nine ring there. But I'm really happy with uh, the performance of that Atlas over and over again. It's very consistent. And I guess the reason that I really go to the Atlas over the UTG most of the time is just the consistency and the flexibility to do a lot of different things. It's really good for competition, even though the base and the legs aren't quite as wide or as uh, seemingly steady. It's still very rigid. It's got really good feet. I prefer the feet on the Atlas over the UTG. And there's just a few things that I want to talk about that kind of set it apart. But, you know, really, both of these groups are really, really they're quite good uh, for that rifle. Definitely sub MOA. Sub MOA out to a grand. Definitely handle sub MOA. Both of those bipods are great. And that's why I really put these two against each other. One is about 150 bucks if you get it, you know, maybe on sale. And the other is right around 300 And so you're looking at half the price and you're getting really close to that performance. So... I don't know, man, that's, that's pretty good. I think you'd be happy with both of them, but let's talk a little bit more about why I kind of bend towards the Atlas if I'm gonna choose one. So here it is. The reason I tend to go towards the Atlas is the parts that it's made with, the warranty is really, really good, and just the way that it functions, the way that I use it, that's the really big deal here. If you're a bench shooter, that UUQ is probably great. If you have a Picatinny mount and a way to get it on there and, and keep it there and you're willing to finagle with it just a little bit, I think the UUQ is actually a fantastic deal at $70. It's not a crappy bipod. The UTG, if you're a hunter, it's especially a good uh, uh, bipod and if you need an overbore bipod, it's the only option on the table quite frankly. But for me in NRL 22 and PRS coming up here in the future, I'm going to lean towards the Atlas because it has the versatility and the function and the features that I need. It's quick attach and detach, and I've used that very often. The other bipods just don't have the same presentation or, or capability to do some of those things. All of these are good bipods. I'm happy with all of them in a certain use, a particular use. I'm keeping them all for some period of time, I'm sure, but especially the Atlas, that's my go-to.